I'd like to call the Tuesday, February 2nd, 2021, Pavilion City Council meeting to order. Ms. Brown, would you please take the roll? Sunday? Here. Mungard? Here. Dane? Here. Glover? Here. Jaworski? Here. Clue? Stubby? Here. Dangberg? Here. Would you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? Thank you. Do we have an affidavit of publication on file? And the current top of the Open Meetings Act is on the uh, counter as you walked in. Uh, no presentations tonight. Ms. Powers, administrative report, please. Thank you, Mayor Black. Uh, the contract has been signed and demolition work has started this week at the City Hall for the renovation project. Uh, everything is on track and we're excited to get that project moving forward. Uh, Moody's announced last week that Papillion has once again secured the AA1 rating uh, for its general obligation bonds. And this is also the rating that we have for our utility and our golf bonds as well. Uh, this is the second highest rating in Moody's system. Thank you, Nancy and your team, for all your work on helping us secure that. Uh, rating, especially during a global pandemic. Uh, just a reminder that there'll be a public works committee meeting at 5.30 p.m. on February 16th, and this is a follow-up from the meeting we had two weeks ago. Um, and finally, the virtual conference session is in, a conference season is in full swing, uh, so keep an eye out for communications from Kendra if there's any conferences that you guys want help getting signed up for. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, again, just a reminder, um, speak loudly when we're, when we're speaking. Um, we are upgrading, we got a slight upgrade to the sound system, just a couple of components need to come in. Um, but like everything else with COVID, shipments are somewhat delayed. Um, so probably the next council meeting may be about it, this one, and then we'll be back to full sound reinforcement. Um, but uh, we are still able to record. Uh, we got sound that's picking up everything, and Tori is still recording, so we're still getting it out on the YouTube channel. Uh, but at least for physically here, uh, speak up when, when ready. Uh, do we have a motion to approve the consent agenda? Okay. Motion by Councilman Gaines, second by Councilman Glover. Do we have any proponents or opponents? Seeing none, any council discussion? Please vote. Sunday? Yes. Mumgard? Yes. Dane? Yes. Glover? Yes. Jaworski? Yes. Suvi? Yes. Amber? Yes. Seven motion passes. Next two items are related. Item F1, resolution R20-0198, a public hearing and a vote. A resolution to approve a preliminary plat for the property legally described as attractive land located in the south half of the northwest quarter and tax lot nine in the northwest quarter and part of lot 10 in the southwest quarter, all in section 15, township 13, north range 11 east of the 6 p.m. Sarkey County, Nebraska, generally located on the southeast corner of South 168th Street and Fairview Road. The applicant is Omaha Public Power District. Um, this has been um, continued periodically. Um, so the public hearing had previously been open. I'll go ahead and call for any additional proponents. Anybody want to speak in favor? You come up to the podium and state your name for the record. Welcome. Great, good evening. Uh, my name is Tim Burke and I'm President and CEO of Omaha Public Power District. Uh, and I'm certainly living closer to Papillion at 12705 South 75th Avenue. So uh, just moved in uh, not too long ago. So uh, good to be here. Well, thank you very much. Um, it's a great opportunity for me to talk a little bit about what we're calling now our Turtle Creek uh, Generating Station uh, as we're doing the planning and as uh, the council is considering uh, this opportunity. Um, I'll have you go to the next agenda item. I want to talk quickly really about a couple things. One about what this project is. It's, it's much bigger than just this generating station that we're talking about uh, here in Sarpy County. It's really what we call power with purpose. Um, and also there's really a, a, really a shared interest and importance on this site uh, that uh, both the City of Papillion and the uh, Omaha Public Power District team has worked so closely on over the last several months. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about some of the approvals that we've already received. Uh, both at the state level and, and the local level as well, and some of the stakeholder engagement uh, processes that we're currently uh, in at this point in time. And then talk a little bit about future development and how uh, the teams have really worked together to think about how we develop this property. If you want to go to the next slide, please. 
Um, as we have talked about power with purpose, our board approved in November of 2019 our power with purpose initiative. And this was really based on um, really a couple important elements. One is our board has made a commitment to um, essentially retire three generating stations at our North Omaha facility uh, up on the river uh, north of the downtown area um, and to convert two of our existing coal units to natural gas at the end of 2023. So that's a piece of this. We are modernizing um, our older natural gas generation and we're converting some of our coal. Part of it is around our uh, commitment on decarbonization. We're at our North Omaha facility, we're gonna see, to, uh, see a 80 to 90% reduction in our carbon emissions at our North Omaha station. That is abutted by a variety of different uh, kinds of developments, including residential as well. And of course, natural gas is a, is a much um, cleaner and, and nicer emitter um, than, than maybe coal is. And so our board has made that commitment um, back in 2014 and we're now executing on that. The other thing we're doing is modernizing also our gas generation. So we're taking these three large old coal units that we've converted to gas, we're retiring them, and we're installing some modernized natural gas equipment that are faster, quicker in the market. It will improve our not only our reliability, but our resiliency. The other item that's really important in this plan is that as we see this pretty significant growth occurring in Sarpy County, um, and certainly the western part of Sarpy County, you don't have to go too far south of 370 on Highway 50 to see the significant growth and development that has occurred. And we just continually see announcement after announcement. Those are all really positive things for this county. Um, and I've, I've been a resident of this county for, uh, since 1989. So um, I certainly understand that. But in order for us to do that, we have to make sure that we have the generation um, available to meet that growing generation. Um, and so part of this is also adding additional generation or capacity that would support our resiliency and our reliability commitments. Part of Power With Purpose too is also for us to continue our decarbonization. So our plan is to add anywhere between four to 600 megawatts of solar um, throughout our 5,000 square foot, excuse me, 5,000 square mile service territory from north of Blair all the way down to the Kansas border and includes Carter Lake and, and abuts up to uh, the Lincoln Territory as well. So somewhere in there, we're working to essentially develop uh, some solar uh, arrays. And by doing that, we will actually reduce our overall system carbon emissions by about 30%. So there's been a lot of changes going on um, across our service territory, across the regulations that we operate on and that we um, are, are committed uh, to making sure that we're meeting. Our board has identified 15 strategic directives and one of those uh, strategic directives is called strategic directive number seven. It's for us to be net zero carbon by 2050. And so we are doing that in a very thoughtful, very mindful, very planned way. And this is a component of our decarbonization initiative and plan. Um, all of this is on the OPPD website. All of it is on our uh, community uh, connections website around Power With Purpose. If any of the public would want to go and get some additional information on it, they can certainly, certainly do that. Um, so it's really important for us as we begin these challenges of growth and load, uh, growth in our service territory uh, to meet that ongoing growth. And so we've done that with what we call power with purpose. And this project at the Turtle Creek Generating Station as was identified uh, by Mayor Black is really an important element where we're very close to this growing load pocket that's occurring in Sarpy County. Um, and it will really improve our not only reliability but resiliency um, in a very economic um, and cost-effective manner. Um, if you can go to the next slide, please. Um, why this site is really important is that it really meets our power with purpose objectives and I'll talk a little bit about those. It supports the growth, it supports the reliability uh, in our region and, uh, and across our service territory. Uh, it is very close to critical infrastructure um, of our transmission structure that is currently in West Sarpy County. Um, that is really one of the reasons why the growth is occurring there, specifically for some of the large loads that um, are um, are now um, operating there in, in Western Sarpy County. Uh, what's also important with this is, you know, OPPD has some unique statutory um, guidelines that we have, but we voluntarily have committed to the city of Papillion in great working relationship with the, with the staff here to make sure that we participate in, in paying the fees, including uh, some of the um, sewer connection fees that total 
in $2.4 million to make sure that we're contributing our portion of that ongoing development um, in this part uh, of the city of Papillion and this part of Sarpy County. Uh, and we're very pleased with that. Our commitment has been to the city of Papillion that we will make sure that we provide additional landscaping and additional screening above minimum standards. Again, this site that is sitting to the north, uh, to, excuse me, to the south of Fairview Road um, may have stacks that may be in the 110 to 120 feet. Uh, but if you think about where they may be in the uh, major thoroughfares, um, it'll be uh, barely seen. And certainly we're going to find ways where uh, we look at screening and burying that um, in, in a most important way. And so because of this critical infrastructure, because it is close to current transmission, and also because it's uh, very close to a natural gas transmission line um, that operates uh, north and south in that part of, uh, of the county. So all of these elements are really important. And, and I will just say this to the council and certainly the mayor and I have had this conversation. Uh, you have just an exceptional team to work with here. Um, these, these can be very difficult projects. And uh, what we have found is that um, the, the city, the staff, uh, the mayor in this case have been open for the discussion and the dialogue. And I think we found a solution uh, in which both parties really benefit. Uh, and I'm gonna move to uh, one, of the, one of the next slides um, here, um, where we talk about some of the approvals that we've already received to date. So we went through the Power Review Board in which we received approval on December 4th. Uh, one of our requirements is that we have to demonstrate the need for this generation and the Power Review Board um, essentially approved that on December 4th. We've also gone in front of the Planning Commission of the City of Papillion on October 28th. Uh, we have went to the Sarpy County and City's Wastewater Agency to look for uh, an exemption on a piece of this property. Um, and that uh, uh, approval was given on October 28th of 2020. Uh, we have started our stakeholder process back in September where we engaged um, anybody in the public that wanted to engage on this topic about what we were doing, why we were doing it, uh, and some of the impacts. In our first meeting, we had over 52 attendees, and we did a series um, long, uh, multiple hour long uh, session on a variety of Q and A's around what this project is and what it could be. Again, we uh, developed a online uh, kind of community connection and stakeholder uh, website that it's called OPPD Community Connection where anybody can go on and see the development, uh, the updates, the Q&As that we've developed, but also an opportunity for us to get feedback and input on this project. And in January, just a couple weeks ago, we had our first transmission um, siting uh, stakeholder process because when you build the generating station, we have to connect it to um, at least three separate substations. And so we're going through a transmission routing process very open, very transparent. We're looking for continued feedback from the public and certainly the, the surrounding neighbors and the surrounding jurisdictions uh, around this topic. Um, I'll go to the next slide here because I think this is where um, our desire and need for a generating station really matches up with the potential growth opportunity where this is a plat done uh, by um, model companies uh, that we engaged with, which we have in the middle of this footprint uh, the OPPD Turtle Creek Generating Station, which will be two uh, uh, 200 megawatt nominally uh, generating uh, combustion turbines uh, that are very close to a natural gas transmission pipeline, uh, very close to our electric transmission um, intersection. So we are able to move this power um, across where the load is across our region. But we're also looking at how do we um, use this property to develop it for the future. And so we work very closely with NATO companies in the city of Papillion to really find opportunities where we can grow and develop this. And actually, as we looked at this property, we were at, um, able to actually grow uh, the tax valuation of this property via some of the work that we've done. Um, and I think that goes to the, to the great work um, from Mark Sturzma, uh, from, from Amber, from Phil, uh, from, from the team uh, on really engaged around this, uh, this uh, a project really just to, to challenge us to make sure it's the right project for the city papillion so we're um, we're anxious to get to this point uh, at the city papillion for this approval uh, for us to move forward and our team is anxious and excited to be able to do that i'd love to answer uh, any questions that you have uh, but in advance i'd like to thank you for your confidence and confidence in us and our ongoing opportunity for us to work together so thank you very much thank you tim your team's been great to work with appreciate it. thank you do you have any other proponents? Oh, Mr. Munger. Go ahead. 
I don't particularly have a question for you, but I'll repeat the comment I made in one of the sessions. I hope when you built this that you use some imagination and make it look like something other than just a bunch of wires and metal frames. That, I mean, obviously you're limited in what you have to do. Sure. But this is an area that's going to develop in the future. And so using some level of imagination and cosmetics would be favorable. And that's not reason <coughs> enough to turn it down, but I would request it. No, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Uh, Tim, understood. Yes, you just blog that line. I, I want to compliment <coughs> you and OPPD because uh, what gives me some confidence in the building is if you go by your similar states you have 36th Street, you literally can't find it unless you're looking for it. I mean, it's really screened and covered. If you go out there, you can barely see the top of two of the stacks, if I remember correctly. You really don't see a big power plant like you and I or some of us would traditionally think of a uh, big electric station. You, just, you can't see it. Well, we, we really don't really want anyone to see it. Uh, it is a critical infrastructure and in, in the work that we do is pretty critical to not only uh, this metropolitan area, but it's absolutely critical for this whole region. Um, so thank you. Thank you. Do we have any other proponents? Do we have any opponents? Anybody neutral? All right, I'll close the public hearing. Do I have a motion to approve resolution R20198? Motion. by Councilman Glover, second by Councilman Ingberg. Any other council discussion? Please vote. Sunday? Yes. Lumberg? Yes. James? Yes. Glover? Yes. Jaworski? Yes. Suvi? Yes. Engberg? Yes. Seven yes, zero nine. Motion passes. Item F2, resolution R20199, a public hearing and a vote. A resolution to approve a special use permit to authorize utilities as a permitted use for the property legally described as a tract of land located in the south half of the northwest quarter, tax lot 9 in the northwest quarter, and part of tax lot 10 in the southwest quarter. All in section 15, Township 13 North, Range 11 East of the 6 p.m. Circuit County, Nebraska, generally located on the southeast corner of South 168th and Fairview Road, the applicant's OPPD. Uh, the City Council, the public hearing was continued again. It's still open. I'll call for proponents. We'll carry all your other comments over to this one so you don't have to repeat it, Tim, unless you want to. Um, do we have anybody who wants to comment? I'll close the public hearing. Do we have a motion to approve resolution R20199? Motion by Councilman Jaworski. Second by Councilman Stubbe. Any discussion? Please vote. Sunday? Yes. Mumgard? Yes. James? Yes. Glover? Yes. Jaworski? Yes. Stubbe? Yes. Engberg? Yes. 78 Thank you again. Item F3, Resolution R20-0200, Resolution to approve a final plat for the property legally described as attractive land in the south half of the northwest quarter in the tax lot 9 in the northwest quarter and part of tax lot 10 in the southwest quarter all in section 15 township 13 north range 11 east Serby county nebraska generally located southeast corner south 168th and fairview road obpd so motion to approve resolution r 20 200 motion by councilman gaines second by councilman jaworski anybody any proponents or opponents council discussion please vote Sunday? Yes. Mumgard? Yes. James? Yes. Glover? Yes. Jaworski? Yes. Suvi? Yes. Engberg? Yes. 78 Motion passes. F4, Resolution R20 0201, a resolution to approve the SC South Subdivision Agreement. So motion to approve. Motion by Councilman Stuby. Second by Councilman Jaworski. Any proponents or opponents? Council discussion? Please vote. Sunday? Yes. Mumgard? Yes. James? Yes. Glover? Yes. Jaworski? Yes. Suvi? Yes. Engberg? Yes. 78 Those were all related to the OPPD item, so again, thank you, Tim, for the partnership. Yeah, thank you. Item F5, Resolution R21-0011, a public hearing and a vote. A resolution to approve a Class D liquor license for Bucks LLC doing business as Bucky's Express 14, 11400 South 72nd Street, and a manager application for Tina Stone. This is a public hearing. I'll open it. Do we have any proponents? Is the applicant here? Okay. You don't have to say anything, but if you want to, I just want to make sure council knows that you're here. Okay. 
Any opponents? Oppose the public hearing. Do I have a motion to approve resolution R-21-0011? Motion. Councilman Stubbe, motion. Councilman Ingberg, second. Any discussion? Please vote. Sunday? Yes. Malhern? Yes. Kane? Yes. Glover? Yes. Jaworski? Yes. Stubbe? Yes. Ingberg? Yes. 7 yes, 0 nays. Motion passes. Item F-6, resolution R-21-0015. A resolution to approve a request that Sarkey County cede and transfer jurisdiction over the territory depicted with an Exhibit A, Oak Leaf, to the City of Papillion, pursuant to Nebraska Revised Statute 13-327. Is there a motion to approve resolution R-21-0015? Motion. Motion by Councilman Ingberg, second by Councilman Jaworski. Any proponents or opponents? Any council discussion? Please vote. Sunday? Yes. Lumber? Yes. Kane? Yes. Glover? Yes. Jaworski? Yes. Stubbe? Yes. Ingberg? Yes. 7 yes, 0 F7, Ordinance 1880. An ordinance to approve a change of zone from AG Agricultural to CC Community Commercial and R4 Multifamily Residential for the property legally described as a tract of land located in part of the Northeast Quarter, the Northwest Quarter, and part of the Northwest Quarter, the Northwest Quarter. Looks like an auctioneer. Located in Section 1, Township 13, North Range, 12 east of the 6 p.m., generally located southeast of 72nd and Shram Road, the applicant is Papio Park, LLC, 72 place. Is there a motion to approve Ordinance 1880? Motion. Motion by Councilman Glover. <clears throat> Second by Councilman Stubbe. Any discussion? Please vote. Sunday? Yes. Mungern? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Glover? Yes. Jaworski? Yes. Stubbe? Yes. Ingberg? Yes. 7 Motion passes. Related item F8, resolution R21-0016, a resolution to approve a final plat for the property legally described as a tract of land located in part of the Northwest Quarter, the Northwest Quarter, and part of the Northeast Quarter, the Northwest Quarter, located in Section 1, Township 13, North Range, 12 east of the 6 p.m., Sarpy County, Nebraska, Generally located southeast of 72nd and Shram Road, the applicant, Papio Park, LLC. So motion to approve resolution R21-0016. Motion. Motion by Councilman Sunday. Second by Councilman Gaines. Any proponents or opponents? Council discussion. Please vote. Sunday? Yes. Mumgard? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Glover? Yes. Jaworski? Yes. Stubbe? Yes. Ingberg? Yes. Seven, eight, zero, nine. Motion passes. Also related, F9, resolution R21-0017, a resolution to approve the 72 place subdivision agreement. Motion to approve resolution R21-0017. Motion. Motion by Councilman Gaines. Second. Second by Councilman Stude. Sunday. Any proponents or opponents? Council? Please vote. Sunday? Yes. Mumgar? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Glover? Yes. Jaworski? Yes. Stubbe? Yes. Ingberg? Yes. 7 yes, 0 nay. Motion passes. Also related, F10. Resolution R21-0018, a resolution to approve the sewer and water connection agreement for SID 350, 72 place. Motion to approve resolution R21-0018. Motion. Motion by Councilman Sunday. Second by Councilman Glover. Any proponents or opponents? Council discussion? Please vote. Sunday? Yes. Mumgard? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Glover? Yes. Jaworski? Yes. Stubbe? Yes. Ingberg? Yes. 7 Motion passes. Still related, F11, resolution R21-0019, resolution to approve the 72 place maintenance agreement for on-street parking. So motion to approve resolution R21-0019. Motion by Councilman Stubbe? Second. Second by Councilman Gaines. Any proponents or opponents? Council discussion? Please vote. Sunday? Yes. Mumgar? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Glover? Yes. Jaworski? Yes. Stubbe? Yes. Ingberg? Yes. 7 yes, 0 nay. Motion passes. A number of the related items about the uh, uh, vacation of the unimproved parks, and we're going to handle these individually. F12, Ordinance 1914. 
an ordinance to approve the vacation of the unimproved part of First Street right-of-way lying in the south half of the northeast quarter and in the northwest quarter of the southeast quarter, section 26, township 14, north range 12 east of the 6 p.m., with title thereto retained by the city of Papillion. Is there a motion to approve ordinance 1914? Motion by Councilman Jaworski. Second by Councilman Stubbe. Any discussion? Please vote. Sunday? Yes. Mungard? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Glover? Yes. Jaworski? Yes. Pastuti? Yes. Egbert? Yes. Seven yeah. zero nine. Okay. Motion passes. F13, ordinance 1915, an ordinance to approve the conveyance of title for the unimproved part of the first street right-of-way line in the south half of the northeast quarter and in the northwest quarter of the southeast quarter, section 26, township 14, north range 12 east of the 6 p.m., to be vacated by ordinance 1914 from the city of Papillion to the Papio, Missouri River Natural Resource District. Motion to approve ordinance 1915. Motion by Councilman Jaworski. Second by Councilman uh, Glover. Any discussion? Please vote. Sunday? Yes. Mungard? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Glover? Yes. Jaworski? Yes. Yes. Amber? Yes. Seven years Motion passes. F14, Ordinance 1916, an ordinance to approve the vacation of the unimproved parts of Jefferson Street, Monroe Street, Beatles Street, Addition Street, and Alley Right of Way, lying within or between blocks 21, 22, and 23 in the northwest quarter of Section 26, Township 14, North Range 12 East of the 6 p.m., with title retained by the City Pavilion. Is your motion to approve Ordinance 1916? Motion by Councilman Sunday, second by Councilman Jaworski. Any discussion? Please vote. Sunday? Yes. Mumgard? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Glover? Yes. Jaworski? Yes. Stubbe? Yes. Engberg? Yes. 7809. Motion passes. F-15, Ordinance 1917, an ordinance to approve the conveyance of title for the unimproved parts of Jefferson Street, Monroe Street, Beetle Street, Addition Street, and Alley Right-of-Way. Lying within or between blocks 21, 22, and 23 in the northwest quarter of section 26, Township 14, North Range 12 East, of the 6 p.m. Sarpy County, Nebraska, to be vacated by Ordinance 1916 from the City of Papillion to the Papio, Missouri River Natural Resource District. Is there a motion to approve Ordinance 1917? Motion. Motion by Councilman Gaines. Second by Councilman Stubbe. Any discussion? Please vote. Sunday? Yes. Mumgarn? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Glover? Yes. Jaworski? Yes. Stubbe? Yes. Engberg? Yes. 7809. Motion passes. F-16, Ordinance 1918, an ordinance to approve the vacation of the unapproved part of Addition Street in the northwest quarter of Section 26, Township 14 North, range 12 east of the 6 p.m. Start beginning Nebraska with title thereto retained by the City Papillion. Uh, motion approved 1918. Motion by Councilman Jaworski. Second by Councilman Stubbe. Any discussion? Please vote. Sunday? Yes. Mumgar? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Glover? Yes. Jaworski? Yes. Stubbe? Yes. Engberg? Yes. 7809. Motion passes. F-17, Ordinance 1919, an ordinance to approve the conveyance of title for the unimproved parts of Addition Street in the northwest quarter. Section 26, Township 14, North Range 12 East of the 6 p.m. Start beginning Nebraska to be vacated by Ordinance 1918 from the City Papillion to PW and RD Enterprises. So motion to approve Ordinance 1919. Motion by Councilman Jaworski. Second by Councilman Glover. Any discussion? Please vote. Sunday? Yes. Mumgard? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Glover? Yes. Jaworski? Yes. Stewie? Yes. Engberg? Yes. That is all of those items, and uh, I want to thank uh, Public Works Director Jeff Thompson. That's been a, an old, old, old project that's needed to be done for a long time, and they finally found the time to do it. So thank you very much for that. F-18, Ordinance 1920, an ordinance to rename Fall Creek Road abutting lots 407 to 421 Eagle Ridge to be South Fall Creek Road. Is there a motion to approve Ordinance 1920? Motion by Councilman Jaworski. Second by Councilman Gaines. Any discussion? Please vote. Sunday? Yes. Mumgard? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Glover? Yes. Jaworski? Yes. Stubbe? Yes. Engberg? Yes. 7809. Motion passes. Next two items are fireworks related. Annual item 
First one is item F-19, ordinance 1921, an ordinance to amend Million Municipal Code section 117.12 to approve for amendments to firework sales applications and provide for an effective date. Is there a motion to approve ordinance 1921? Motion. Motion by Councilman Munger. Second. Second by Councilman Ingberg. Mr. Munger, did you have a potential amendment to this one? I believe Mr. Jaworski did. Mr. Jaworski? Well, I thought we were going to do the amendment that goes from February 1st through April 30th. And that was handed out at everybody's table. So let me read it to make sure that everybody knows what the amendment is. So a motion to amend ordinance 1921, and what it's going to do is in section E, it's going to strike during the month of February of each year, and it's going to replace it with from February 1 through April 30th of each year. So it's going to extend the time period. And then it's going to add a new paragraph after the sentence that reads, the amended application may seek to change only the applicant's proposed firework sales location and matters directly affected by location. A new sentence, if the amendment involves a proposed firework sales location that has not yet been reviewed by the city for that year, each amended application shall be accompanied by an amendment processing fee in an amount specified in the master fee schedule. And then in the last sentence, April becomes June because of the prior change. Is that clear? So that's a motion to amend. Is there a second? Second by Councilman Mungard. Do you have any proponents or opponents on the motion to amend? I just had a comment. It proposes to bring to the vote of the council in the first meeting in June on whether we approve the move or not, which is really just three weeks before the firework stands are to open. So it really, in my view, it puts the council in a position, having it that late in the game, where if we don't approve it, we're really kind of screwing over that vendor and don't give them time to react to a vote that maybe doesn't go their way. So the only change I would make is maybe back it up a little bit so that it gives the council a true decision rather than just a rubber stamp. Change it from June to May? They put it at May? Yeah, I mean, it's a little more time. That gives them seven weeks, probably. It's going to be June 2nd, which would mean May is for everyone weeks by April 30th. Yeah, I think that's adequate. Just maybe a couple more weeks. So if we do turn the vendor down, they can then have enough time to decide whether they want to stick with the original location or just not have a stand that year. I'm not saying that we would do that, but I can envision a situation where we might. We've got a motion to a second on the motion to amend. It's a fairly simple change. Do you want to make a, do you want to go with that or do you want to go forward with what we originally had? I would say I like that idea. Change June to May and then everything's good, wouldn't it be? Who made the second? I did. I've got a comment. I think I have a problem with that in that the object here is to give the applicants, the people who want to sell fireworks, an opportunity to come in with a new location after they've already been approved. So really all we're looking at at that point is that new location. And so I'd say the question, you know, and basically they need to know whether that location has been approved or not as early as possible because they're going to have to get it all set up. So I would just ask, well, okay, if somebody comes in at the end of April, April 30th, and has a new location, can the staff review it and provide us the information before our first meeting in June? If they can do it, then I'd say fine, let's stay where we're at because it gives the applicant the most certainty as to where they're going to operate. If you can't do it, well, then fine. Let's give them, got to give you more time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Council. 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 Thank you
Well, my understanding that the person that they're not here tonight, but that put forth this uh, amendment, the original amendment, uh, did speak with, they told me that they had spoken to the vendors and they thought that that was a consistent with other communities and they thought that time frame would work. Particularly when, I understand what uh, Councilman Sunday is saying, but we're not dealing with the permit itself. They already have the permit. No, I get that part. Yes. Yeah. I'm so, just saying, what if we don't approve of that new location? Well, if we're not going to approve that new location, we ought to tell the applicant as soon as possible. And that's uh, why I'm saying we should move that over. But you're saying, but you're squeezing them at the other end because they have to have the same sure, because then they're caught between July 4th and May. Well, right now they're going to be caught between, say, June 3rd and. and June 25th, only three weeks to yeah. act. So I'm saying make it the meeting before that in mid-May, have the vote in mid-May so they have more time to react. Well, okay. That's all I'm saying. And all I'm saying is, what's, I, I, I guess it means it's so little to me, but what's it mean to the staff? Can you get it done? <clears throat> Second meeting in May, reasonable. Mr. Toobie's got a good question here. Why do we have to approve it? Why can't staff just approve it? Why does that, I mean, we're approving the permit. Let staff approve the location. The answer to that is that our code says that the application fixes the, the location. Fixes the location. Yeah, so the, the staff doesn't have that leeway. So the staff comfortable with second meeting in May? Make that a friendly amendment to the motion that's on the floor? So, um, any other discussion on the proposed amendment? Please vote. This is the second amendment. This is to amend the motion so it extends from uh, just being the month of February to being February to April for the application. Oh. And then we'll lull you all to sleep. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. And then, um, and then if there is an amendment during that time frame and it's a new location, there is a fee involved because now we got a new inspection to do. And then it will be the second meeting in May uh, would be the approvals. But the permit deadline does not change. The permit deadline does not change. Well, it doesn't change from what this amendment is. Correct. Please vote. Sunday? Yes. Mungard? Yes. Singh? Yes. Glover? Yes. Jaworski? Yes. Tubi? Yes. Yeah. So that motion is now amended. Any discussion on the amended motion? Mayor, I'd, uh, are we talking about the motion motion now for the program? <laughs> I'm a little confused about <laughs> So we're talking about the uh, motion that um, allows for the amending of your application. That's that's what we're voting on now. We're not we're not voting on the number of licenses. We're not talking on actual people for this year. Just on the the new ability to amend locations. Okay, but, Mr. Munger. But if we vote to approve this now, that ends the changes in that ordinance, right? And if somebody wants to increase the numbers, they have to start over again and go three meetings. If right? you want, if somebody's contemplating changing the number of licenses, that's a totally different section we, we haven't dealt with. So that would be a new ordinance. That's not for tonight. This is a different section. Would that be appropriate, Mr. Thielen? Yes, we well, have. We have see, I, and I disagree. I think <laughs> what we are doing is amending the ordinance number 1921, the firework amendment. And whether we amend it with this section only, or we amend it with other sections. I think we can do that. I think Ordinance 1921 is specific to Section 117.12. The number is in 117.13, and that's not a topic of the ordinance. Yeah. It'd be my interpretation if I looked Mr. Thielen. But I agree. We, we haven't advertised any change to 117-13, so we need to do that in our separate ordinance. Okay, so let's look at the timeline. Um, if somebody wants to increase the number, to 15, 16, or whatever. When is the earliest we can get that done? 
that would be an ordinance change and a little bit of public education. An ordinance takes three readings, an introduction by a council member, then a public hearing, then council discussion and a vote. Typical process is those are on individual nights, so three different council meetings. So that implies probably a six week process unless a council member would waive a second or third reading, which is allowed by our rules, which would speed the whole process up. But we rarely do those. Typical for bond, we've done it a couple of other times, but they are rare. But that's the process. So it'd be six weeks unless it's sped up by the rules via the council. Okay, so if we turn somebody down tonight and then somebody, a council member introduces an ordinance at the next meeting to increase the number to allow them to come in, the soonest we can get it done under the usual procedure would be the second meeting in March. If we started the first meeting. Yeah, because the introduction would be the next council meeting. Which would give them then one month to get their application. Is that right? If you increase the number. I don't want to, but maybe. But there's been discussion of it. I just want to make sure everybody understands that if we don't change it tonight, that's the timeline we're on. March 16th is the magic number. I think we're moving off of the topic of the motion that's on the floor, though. Yeah, but see, I think that that's not the only motion that should be on the floor. Well, we deal with them one at a time. So let's deal with the motion that's on the floor, which is the amendment of the location. Any other discussion on that? I do have a question. Please vote. I have a question. Oh, Mayor. I got a question. Is there somebody here that has a question? I do have a question. Is it specific to amending locations? Yes. Okay, go ahead and come up to the podium. And I'll ask you a question. So if we change the location. Can you state your name for the record? Kayla. If we change the location and we come back and the location is not approved, then are we out? Do we not get a chance to change to a different location and try to get a second location approved? The current process is you make application for your license. That's approved, and that is specific to a location. So you still have that location. If later on, for whatever reason, mine's changing, we go to a different location, currently that's not allowed. That's what this motion is doing is opening that process to change mines. If that new location is not approved for whatever reason, my understanding of the rules is you still have your license approved at your current location. Not approving the second location didn't take the license away from the original location. But, I mean, we said, obviously, we said on empty lots, we don't want to move. We've been there for years. But if that realtor decides to build on that starting when fireworks are supposed to, obviously, and then we come back with a different address and we don't approve of that, then our license is void? Yeah, the motion on the floor doesn't have a provision for a second, a third, and a fourth location. It's an amendment for a change. Well, again, I'm going to disagree. The motion on the floor simply says that up until April 30th of each year, an applicant whose application has been approved by the council may file an amended application. Correct. I read that to say you may file as many amended applications as you want. Right. But the issue becomes the deadline for that application to be filed is April 30th. The decision point now is the second meeting in May. So if it's denied, you can't do a new application because you're past the application deadline. But if I come in on April 1st? April 30th is the deadline based on the motion that's on the floor. But if I would have came earlier is what I'm saying, then can I go to a city council meeting earlier? If you lose your location, you can lose like unlimited number of locations up until April 30th. Because you just keep filing new applications. Correct. And then whatever is the last one you have by April 30th, that's the one you make the decision on. Perfect. Thank you. Did we interpret it, Mr. Thielen? It's the lawyer's job. Mr. Thielen? Yes. Are you interpreting it the same way Mr. Mungard explained it? What's up for vote right now is ordinance number 1929. Correct. As amended 
to provide for the, the February 1st through April 30th um, period to file an application to um, change your location. Yes. And that's what's up for real quick. So did you have a question out of that, Mr. Munger, that needs clarification? No, I'm, I'm just saying that as far as I'm concerned, that allows an unlimited number of amended applications up until April 30th. Uh, I suppose that would create a lot of confusion for the city if somebody came in with multiple applications. I would think that there'd have to be some discussion going on between the applicant and the city to narrow that down. We've never had a process where you could change your location. No. And now we're having, we're, we're allowing the process. If the now we're talking about multiple changes of location, that seems silly to me. Well, I think what we have here is perfectly adequate, which is just well, wrong. But, but you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I understood the reason that, that someone suggested this change was in the event, primarily in the event that you have a location and a developer sells it after you get a permit, then obviously you have to find another spot. Yeah. And that was to deal with that. I mean, that's not the whole reason, but. That was a difficulty that I was told that uh, vendors had that they may have a spot and have it reserved and everything else, but then the developer gets to get an offer on a lot and sell them. And they're not allowed to use it then, so they give them an opportunity to move to a different location, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and, okay. And so, I'm going to agree with that, Mr. Ingram. I'm just saying that can happen more than once. Yes. If that happens more than once, I think you can still come in and get get a new location as long as you meet the April 30th. Mr. Gaines, did you have something? Yeah, I, I think that what I'm hearing is, and I heard multiple locations, but you only have one from that. So you can come in and ask for one location. And, and if you wanted to do that 10 times and change your location 10 times, then that's my interpretation of it. I, I don't see a limitation of it in the in the proposed change. So that would be my interpretation. You can't so you the April apply. 30th deadline and pay the fee. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, because there's a fee every time you Absolutely. ask for a change. Yeah. 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 Uh, Nicole, Nicole, who is the city clerk who actually manages this process, has a comment. I think the issue that she's raising is it's this specific amendment that we've already adopted sets a specific council meeting for the amended applications to be heard. So I think her question mm -hmm. is if she brings in an, an amended location on April 1st, can that go to the second council in April so that if it's denied, she still has People additional council meetings prior to. So I think the issue is that we have set a specific council meeting to review the As opposed to as, as soon as we get the application right. process and get it to the next council right. and make a decision. And the date of decision would be after the deadline when you get file, which means you're in Mr. Sunday. You could just change the language to read uh, no later than that meeting, and that would that would open it up. You okay with that, Mr. Jaworski? Oh yeah. Mr. Munger, <laughs> you made the second. Are you okay with that? Mayor, this isn't even mine. So I don't know how I got the second one. <laughs> Mr. Gaines. Do we need to make a substitute amendment? Well, yeah, probably should. Um, as much discussion as there's been. Then I'll, I'll make a substitute amendment to make the decision no later than. The second meeting in May. We'll just take that as a motion to amend because we already amended the well, previous. I, I think we already passed the motion to amend. We did that. We passed the uh, the amend the motion to amend, and so now what we're so we have a motion as amended. So now what we're doing based on Mr. Gaines is bringing another motion so forward. So we could we could do another motion to amend. Yep. To change that one sentence that we originally changed to read uh, the second meeting in May. If you want, you can do a motion to amend that to say. No later. No later than the second meeting. Today. I'll yeah. second that. Okay. So we have a motion by Mr. Gaines, a second by Mr. Sunday. Any more discussion on that point? Please vote. Sunday? Yes. Mungard? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Glover? Yes. Jaworski? Yes. Stubbe? Yes. Engberg? Yes. 
Seven yeas, zero nays. So we have a motion as amended, and just for clarity, let me summarize it again. So we've got the so we've got the motion on the table to allow the new process to amend locations, and in that we can take the location amendments between February 1st and April 30th. Um, if it is a new location, there is a fee associated, and that's in the master fee schedule. And once we get the application, it will be processed and taken to a council meeting no later than the second meeting in May. That's clear. Please vote. Sundish? Yes. Mungard? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Lover? Yes. Jaworski? Yes. Suvi? Yes. Engberg? Yes. Seven yes, zero nine. Thank you for your question. Item F20, Resolution R21010, a resolution to approve applications for the 2021 summer fireworks season, June 25th, July 4th. Is there a motion to approve Resolution R21010? Mr. Jaworski. I'd like to lay this motion over until March 16th. Okay. But I'll, I'll make a substitute motion. Okay. But I'll, I'll explain why. Uh, I'll make a motion that we approve the first nine applicants because they comply with our process we have in place today. They complied with the deadline, they complied with having them in, and, and our process of how we determine how we fill the first 10 spots. And since they are in those nine spots, I don't think we should delay them. We should approve those nine spots. If you want to hold over, this item to make changes like you guys are talking about to amend it, uh, we should do that. But I don't think we should penalize the people that comply with what we asked them to do. I will second that. Okay, so we have a motion, Mr. Thielen, go ahead. That, you know, gonna, sorry, I gotta pull up Robert's rules of order here. Yep. Um, there's a, a hierarchy of motions and some motions that are higher in the hierarchy have to be voted on first before the other ones. And in this case, a motion to postpone to a certain time, which is what Council Member Jaworski raised, is higher than a motion to amend, which is what Mr. Uh, Council Member Engberg raised. So I would suggest taking up the postponed, postponed to the uh, uh, March 16th motion first, vote one way or the other on that, and then we can move um, I, well, quick, probably I'm not sure I heard him back. A quick question, that's where I was going to go. We didn't, there wasn't a second on the table. There was a motion, I'll but second. no second. There was no, there was no opportunity for a second because <laughs> the end, so I will second it. So now, now we have a motion with a second, right? Yeah. Right. This to postpone all of it. Yes. Well, that's the motion on the table. So I just want to be careful um, how we proceed. Um, so the motion on the table is to table this whole item, and there is a second on that. Um, so if we vote on that, it is tabled. And because it's tabled, does that prevent Mr. Ingberg then from bringing back tonight those nine? Yes, it would. Can so he make a, can he amend the motion to table to only table a portion and accomplish both? Can a motion to table table a portion of a motion? Man, the reason I'm tabling this is because I want to get this up to 15 where it probably should have been to begin with. So I'm thinking, what is this going to hurt if we table this for six weeks and allow three more people in? Everybody's still going to have the same opportunity. The nine people that are in, they're in. It's just going to allow, instead of kicking some people out, it's just going to make it fair for everybody. I want to well, keep the conversation going appropriately, but I do want to honor Robert's rule. we got a motion and a second to table. We're in council discussion. I think it's appropriate for Mr. Ingberg to talk about why he may not want to, and then we can kind of figure it out. So I don't think it's inappropriate, Steve, that you go ahead with what your well, thoughts were. You know, I understand what you're saying, Councilman Jaworski, but when you say, well, it's fair to everybody, well, no, it really isn't. You know, let's look at the principle of the thing. We have a requirement by ordinance that they submit their request for permits by a date certain for council's decision 
date certain, and here we are tonight. And the way our process is today, those nine out of the ten slots that are filled are entitled to for a decision tonight because they've complied with everything in our process. The only ones that are not being would be considered tonight are those that are filling the tenth spot. And as it stands tonight, the two additional spots, some people on the council approved of. So it's not going to harm them, but certainly I don't see the reason why we have to put off a decision about nine that are doing what we've told them to do. I don't see what advance, what the reason for that. We get Mr. Scooby. Yeah, and I would agree with that. And I think one of the things that we just did previously was to give more flexibility with regard to changing location. So now all of a sudden we moved six weeks to March whenever. That just now condenses the ability for them to look at another location if they deem that's something they need to do. So I would agree with that, that we should approve what's, what's currently in front of us up to what we're allowed. And if we want to expand in the future, we should do that. So I, I Mr. Sunday. We, we've got the first nine, and I'm looking at them, and every one of them has multiple years of experience uh, right. in this process. And the only other one that does have multiple years of experience not in that front nine is Wellspring Church. They've been doing this for four years, it looks like. Everybody else is in their fifth or second year. Um, so I'm wondering, what, what is it that Wellspring Church did wrong? What didn't they comply with? You, you said they, the other, the front nine, you said complied with the rules and the deadline. What, what is it that the Wealth Grant Church didn't comply with? Can I? Can I call them? The first nine uh, were grandfathered. Okay, but that's not the same thing as not following the rules. He said that the front nine follow the rules. No, I'm talking about the ones that would normally be approved tonight because of our process. I not, didn't say nobody else here didn't follow. I, I misunderstood you then. I thought no. that's what you're saying. Everybody okay. got their permits in on time. Everybody did what they had to do. I'm not saying that. Okay. I'm saying by our process in place today, those nine on our list tonight are grandfathered and they would be, they would they would have been approved tonight. The grandfathered are part of our process. Mr. Gaines. Okay, so I want to go back to the procedure with Mr. Thielen. If if the hierarchy of Robert's rules says that a motion to table is, is higher, then you should there should be no room for amending that motion to table. Is that correct? Because that, that should be a, a blanket motion that's higher than the other ones. So, and I, I'm just talking about procedurally. I'm not talking about the. the yeah, so procedurally, matter. I think you're right. So procedurally, the motion on the floor is to table. So therefore, you can't make an amendment to Correct. Table I, 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 and there is a desire from the discussion that there we probably address a different item. So if we do a, if we table it, unless Mr. Neal wants to something else, we're, we're pretty much done for tonight. Uh, so if there is a desire by the council to actually act on what Mr. Ingberg is saying, I think what we'd want to do is withdraw the motion to table, deal with Mr. Ingberg's, then come back and table the balance. If, if the person that made if the, motion the person wants to do that, but Mr. Thielen. Yeah, I, I think the motion to postpone is still higher in the hierarchy. So we take that up if there's some desire to amend things so that we take up the nine tonight and the other three or whatever next month, then um, the vote should be to against motion postponed so that we can take up what, what we're going to do tonight. What against we're or they could withdraw the motion. Yeah, withdraw the motion or vote against the motion. Yeah. Mr. Sunday. I would just propose that we vote on the motion. If there's not support for it, it won't pass anyway. So let's just vote on it. Any other discussion? So again, just so we know what we're voting on, unless it's withdrawn, uh, the motion on the floor is a motion to table um, to March 16th, and because that cannot be amended, um, a positive vote on that tables everything until March 16th. Uh, a no vote would not table it, and we would be back to the original motion as amended that we started with, unless there is a desire to withdraw the motion to table. Mr. Gaines. And we're still on council discussion. We're still on council discussion. 
<laughs> so for the applicant, I intend to vote. I, I'm going to vote for the motion table, but I intend to approve all the applications. There's not an issue with the applications. I think there's an issue with the process. And I think I've had this discussion with uh, Ben. I may have had it with you, Kayla. <laughs> so it's not an issue against those nine people. Nine applications. But I do want to discuss the process to allow more on that. That increase. Having discussed with you guys in advance, I'm going to go from that too. What your feeling is about increasing the number. Well, let's have, one, let's have one at a time, please. Mr. Inkberg. The only thing I don't understand, if you intend to vote for them all anyway, what value is you, is, is it to hold off the table tonight because if you're going to vote for those nine anyway? Because there's a motion on a Florida table, and procedurally that's what needs to happen. And I, and I think, and I've thought this for nine years, that there may need to be some changes to that to allow other people in. And I... Um, until we get into the discussion on moving forward, that's what I intend to do tonight. But I want to assure the applicant that this isn't about approving their application. It's about not disproving or, or denying other people's applications tonight, and they have to restart the process. So that's that's just the way that, that I'm thinking about it. Mr. Munger. Okay, well, I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to vote against the motion to continue but I will sit here and I will assure all those nine that yes I will vote to approve them whenever we get to approve them because the ordinance tells me I have to it, you know it isn't just that you've done you've done everything right it's that our ordinance has a provision that gives you a right that I can't tell you no so uh, I look at it that well, I just as soon as I can't tell you no, I have to tell you yes because that's what the order says. I just as soon do it tonight and get it over. Now I strongly disagree with that part of the ordinance, and I'm hoping that eventually we make some sense of end it. But that's what it says tonight, and that's what I'm going to do. Any other council discussion? Please vote. Sunday? Yes. Lumber? No. Gaines? Yes. Glover? No. Jaworski? Yes. Suvi? No. Engberg? No. Three yeas, four nays. Motion fails. Three yeas, four nays, so motion fails. Okay, so we're back to the motion that was on the table, um, which is the motion. Oh yeah, because the motion was made after the other one was on the table. So, right. uh, Mr. Ingberg made. Uh, I'll make a motion, make a motion to approve the uh, nine permit permits that we were required to approve tonight. Uh, and we'll, uh, I'll just leave it that. Yeah. I want to make a substitute motion, though. So, you're, when, test, I mean, you're testing me. I know. <laughs> but I, it's, Go ahead. Well, I'd like to make a substitute motion that if we're going to take the nine May that I have, have consecutive no years, then we should take Wellspring, there should be 10 for tonight, and then the rest will have to work on the other. Or we just go with the way it is now, just go with 12, and whoever the 12 are, are. I mean, I just thought this would be easy. Obviously, it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think waiting six weeks was going to hurt much. We're going to be out working on fireworks tomorrow when it's 20 below. I, get that part of it. I just want you, for the record, state unequivocally I'm the one to suggest that we don't do all this rehab on an ordinance that's been working fine up till now, other than adding a couple more uh, spots, perhaps. But I don't disagree with his suggestion. I'll take the amendment. Uh, Wellspring has been with us for four years. Uh, we've never had complaints I'm aware of. Um, so, and, and they are, if you want to use the word entitled, to use your term, they're entitled to that 10 spot because it's vacant. That's what we've always done in the past. Uh, they're the next one up. So I would include them as another number 10 permit holder. And that doesn't prevent anybody else on this council to come back to the next council meeting and 
add 800 more permits if that's what they want or however they want to do it. But I'm just going to honor what the ordinance calls for us to do tonight. And I think that includes adding a uh, wellspring. And I'll second that. Okay, I so then, well. Mr. Again, just procedurally, I want to check. The, the agenda as it was published had a resolution that, that called for all 12. And so I think that procedurally to be appropriate, I think what we want to do is we want to handle the motion um, to approve resolution R21-0100, and then we'll do the amendment to the 10. Does that make sense? Because in a sense you offer Cause the, an Because the resolution is for the 12, so we want to amend that to the to the 10 and carry over right. the two, is what I'm hearing. Yeah. Okay. Mr. So we have a motion and a second. Mr. Mumgarten. Well, I'm going to vote against that. I will vote for the nine. But when you add Wellspring to it, you give them the fifth year, and you're giving them an automatic, and you're making the problem worse. And that now, next year, we'll have 10 that are guaranteed. And I'm saying it's the same thing I've said for the last two years. I've got nothing against Wellspring. But given it that given anybody that five year guarantee has outlived its need its the need and to continue to give Wellspring uh, a, a, a permit year after year and give them that guarantee, I can't do that. Well, I will you know you you know that you and I have disagreed about this for years. I have to like the idea that we have vendors that has a track record with us. They, we know they don't violate the, the fireworks ordinances. We know they sell legitimate products. We know they know our rules, what we expect of them. Every year they clean up the property and they're reliable. We know what to expect. I think there's some value to that, that every, every year we have 15 permits. Everybody fill the, the permits and we'll decide who's deserving this year. Because then you may be dealing with politics, Number one. Number two, you may be dealing with vendors you've never had a uh, relationship with, and then you may end up with complaints from the public, from the police, whatever the case may be. I think there's some value to having some, some uh, reliability from year to year. But we added two more because you wanted two more this last year, if I remember right. And we added two more spots. And that's what we're going to, that's what I thought we were going to vote on tonight, but we're not. So we, we are at an additional spot. Okay. Yes. So, Mr. Manager. First off, no, I was not part of the F and A committee or the that added two spots. I have been preaching for two two prior years that that five year guarantee is going to handcuff us and get us in a problem. We are now in a corner because we don't have options. We we have to approve nine. If we're going to go that direction and start giving people guarantees, then let's get rid of the limit. Why do we have a limit if our ordinance says we don't have choices? So I'm saying that same thing I've said for the last two years. You know, it's bad enough we've got to the point where nine out of ten are guaranteed. Because what that happens then if we have a limit, we've got perfectly deserving people who can create that same record that you're talking about, and we never give them a chance. It also, by having that limit and doing what you're, you're suggesting doing, it automatically makes that permit have a value in and of itself. They don't even have to do it because now they've got something that they can sell to other people. And I've heard stories that happened. So that's why I'm going to vote against giving it to well. But you didn't hear what I said. I didn't say we should never, nobody should have a chance. We added two more this year. I'm saying is, if if the council, a majority of the council feels like we have five additional vendors over the 10 that we, we have right now, or 12 actually now, we have three additional vendors. If there's value, the council thinks that their local organization that they deserve to have a fundraiser, I don't have a problem with that. And if they continue to fundraise every year and they reach get that five year point, then we reach a comfort level. I'm not saying, I, I'm not putting a limit on it, I'm just saying that I think there's some value to having some sort of seniority 
process because it makes it reliable, at least to a point. If you want to add, if somebody comes back to this council, uh, next council meeting says, I want to add five more permits because there are deserving groups, so be it. Then the majority of the council can decide that's what they want to do. Mr. Sunday. Yeah, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Um, it seems to me that Mr. Mumbard's position is that because he disagrees with the grandfather clause, he wants to keep a certain vendor out. Well, to me, that's like that's akin to an employer who wants to fire or let go an employee who's just about to qualify for certain longevity benefits, and then cut their legs out from under them at the last minute because he doesn't like those. That's unfair. I'm sorry. Very unfair. And I would very much oppose that cutting out Wellspring Church this year just because they're about to uh, qualify for what this council voted for, by the way. That's that's plain puppet master behind the scenes, and that's very unfair. I would not support that at all. Okay, I want to get back. I want to uh, get back to the motion that's on the floor, though, so we don't confuse items. So we've got the original motion as it was presented, which is the 12. We have a motion and a second on that. Um, now, I just want to clarify where we're at in the process. Now we've got a, a you've made a motion to amend um, for the 10, and that has been seconded. And so now we are on that, so we're on discussion of that point. Is that correct, Mr. Thielen, where we're at? Did we ever have the original motion to approve? I'm asking Mr. Thielen for a legal opinion, of if that's where we're at. We had the original motion in the second. It was a nine, though. Oh, we didn't? Okay, that was the step we were missing. Okay, so is there a motion to approve resolution R210010? That's the original motion with 12. Then if there's a motion and a second on that, then we can do the the amendment, Mr. Ingberg. Motion. So we have a motion by Councilman Sunday? Second. Second by Councilman Glover. Thank you for that clarification. Um, so now we have a motion by Mr. Ingberg? Yes. Is that for the nine or the 10? Yeah. Okay, so we have a we have a motion to amend for the ten, second. the nine grandfather plus twelve spring. We have a second by Councilman Sunday. So now we're back to discussion on that topic, and, Mr. Thielen. It should be added that the motion uh, also contemplates that the other two will come up. We'll, we'll have to have some kind of disposition on what to do with the other two. Will they come up at some future time or? Would would we make that part of this motion or would that be a table? So. Uh, okay. I'll, well, I'll add to that motion. The additional two new permits that we had available this year will be considered at the next council meeting. I don't want to say next council meeting. I just think the subsequent council meeting, uh, because yeah. somebody may come back and want to change it again. Okay. March 16th? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So we're okay with that? Make that friendly? Okay. Yeah. Council discussion, Mr. Uh, Mr. Gaines. Okay, so I don't want to speak for Council Mumber. But I think the point is, is that by code, we have to prove these nine people, okay? But I think what he's trying to prevent is having one other person, granted they went through the process just like everybody else, but they're not there. So we don't, if we make a decision to not approve number 10, that's our prerogative, but we don't have a prerogative whether to approve or not the first night. And I think that that's, and maybe this process has been a little bit confusing, uh, but that's that's where I'm at also and so if we have an amendment on the floor I'd like to offer a substitute amendment to reduce the numbers that we approved tonight to one through nine and take up the other available permits on March is it 17th 16th whatever date you said I, I can you have a substitute motion on a motion to amend hold on I want to ask Mr. Dean something yes okay Mr. Jaworski. It doesn't matter. I'm going to, whatever we got to do, I'm going to try and add three more to this. After this meeting, we'll get an amendment going. Well, Springs is going to be in this next, next one anyway. They're going to have five years. They are going to be permitted. They're going to have whatever grandfather rights there are. So they might as well just be in this one right now. So that's all I can say. Any other? Mr. Mungard. Okay, now you put me in a position where I'm going to vote for it. 
Hold on one second. I want to, I want to, again, there's a lot going on. I want to make sure procedure is fine. Mr. Gaines made a substitute motion. Is, is there a second? I see no second, so the substitute motion fails. So, Mr. Mungard, go ahead. Mr. Mungard, go ahead. Well, I think Mr. Gaines is substantively correct, but okay, let's go on Mr. Gaines. I'm gonna, I'll, 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 just so we can have a vote. I'm not supporting it, but I will second it so we have a vote. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> I will withdraw my specific motion. We can go back. To okay. So we're back to Mr. Ingberg's. We're in discussion on Mr. Ingberg's motion on the 10. But there's no other discussion. Mr. Mungard. I'm going to vote for this because to vote against it is contrary to what our ordinance says. Because there's nine people, nine applicants who get. Now, I disagree with the 10, but I'm going to do what the code tells me to, and I'm going to approve the nine. And if that means approving the 10, the 10 is the motion on the floor. And if that's what I have to do, I'll do it. Um, any other discussion? An affirmative vote will approve the nine grandfathered plus Wellspring and hold the other two over until the March 16th meeting. So the reason for March 16th is what? I'm not sure, other than that was the date in the motion. The, discuss the discussion that came up. So you asked me what's it for. I'll honestly say I'm not sure because we have no motions other than okay. that's the date. Well, what I pick up from the discussion though is a desire by some council to increase the number from 12. And so I think there's an expectation out of this meeting that at least staff will prepare an ordinance to increase the number and then council can deal with that. And to deal with that, if it moves forward, it takes three meetings. Okay. My only comment would be is that if two others that are in front of us today, if there's some consensus with regard to the council, that's a resolution so it could happen in February if we decide with, to approve two others. Correct? I think you'd have to bring a new resolution forward. Okay. But again, it wouldn't require going into March to do that. We could do it in February. Sure. Yeah. If there was consensus to bring a new resolution sure. forward. Just like any resolution. Yeah. Okay, please, is it clear what you're voting on? You vote a, a vote yes is to approve the nine grandfather plus Wellspring and hold the other two forward until March 16th. Can I make one comment on that? Yes. If anybody might think we have a lousy fireworks ordinance, the night <laughs> approved it. So I got a list of different things to amend that. Whether it'll ever happen, I know, I don't know. That we have a lousy fireworks ordinance. Please vote. Sunday. Yes. Mungard. Yes. Gaines. Yes. Lover. Yes. Jaworski. Yes. Stuby. Yes. Engberg. Yes. Seven yeas, zero nays. Okay, Thank Mayor. Time out. Now, do I have to bring an ordinance up to add three more, or can I? No, I, th I think from the discussion and you specifically saying that, we know the intent is at least one council member wants that ordinance. Okay. We go ahead and get that prepared. There will be somebody that can introduce that, and then we can have the public hearing and vote. Okay, very good. Ms. Brown. That was a motion to amend, so now we need a motion oh. to approve. Yeah. No, we have a motion. We need a vote. I'm getting my master's degree in Robert's Rule of Order. So the motion has now been amended. The, the uh, motion as amended is on the floor. Any more discussion? Please vote. Now you're voting on actually granting them. Sunday. Yes. Mungard. Yes. Gaines. Yes. Lover. Yes. Jaworski. Yes. Stuby. Yes. Engberg. Yes. Seven yeas, zero nays. Motion passes. F21, resolution R21-0014, resolution approval license agreement with Harry Bossert, American Legion Post 32, 230 West Lincoln Street, Papillion, Nebraska, regarding the Legion's proposed temporary and limited use of an adjacent small parcel of city park property. Is there a motion to approve resolution R21-0014? Motion. Motion by Councilman Gaines. Second. Second by Councilman Stuby. Any proponents or opponents? Please vote. Sunday. Yes. Mumbar. Yes. Gaines? Yes. Glover? Yes. Jaworski? Yes. 
Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Motion passes. So the regular agenda items, committee reports. I think the only one that's met is finance and administration. Mr. Ingberg. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the finance administration <laughs> be uh, met tonight uh, with one item only on the agenda. Uh, we discussed, uh, had a discussion about the general obligation yeah. philosophy. Uh, it came to the committee because we have uh, a developer that uh, made a request that we uh, consider changing the, G, uh, the geo debt and how it was arranged. Uh, and basically, the long and short of it is, uh, at this point in time, the committee did not, does not recommend we change our current general obligation debt philosophy. Uh, instead, we uh, asked the, uh, the director, if you want to use that term, the staff to uh, uh, work with, speak with the developer uh, with some suggestions uh, that would include some possible changes regarding uh, the geo debt. And, uh, and, and further, depending on what those conversations uh, develop. Uh, there's a possibility that staff may come back to uh, the committee and or the full council to make an adjustment to the geo debt if they think it has been worked out. But as far as our our philosophy, we currently have that remains in place. Thank you very much. I would just yeah. add that we also elected Councilman Engberg as the chairman of our committee. Congratulations again. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Any comments from the floor? Any council comments? Mayor. Yes, sir. Mr. Stubbe. Okay, so I'm going to get on my colleagues' uh, uh, back a little bit with regard to our fireworks. <laughs> so I would disagree with him from the standpoint, and I don't know how long Mr. Mungard's been on the council, but I think he's been on the council. He wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, I would say that, you know, in the, the number of years that I've been on council, I think it was only until recently that we had this issue with regard to fireworks per minute. But if you go down through the list, I think we in the city of Papillion, because you're looking at all the staff that go through a pretty significant effort of, of putting this all together, you inspect, and we have permits that are issued to companies have been doing it for 20 some years and I think that's a, that's a testament to the program that we have here. Now there might be a little bit of disagreement with the number of permits that are given but I think from the standpoint of the overall program that we have I think it's good. So I just wanted to make that comment. Mr. Jaworski. And I'd like to thank Public Works for their snow removal over the last snowstorm when it snowed for like 22 hours heavily. That had to be tough, and they did a great job. So, Jeff, tell you guys, great work. Yeah. Any other council discussion, Mr. Strindberg? Were you going to mention Colonel Harrington in your comments? Great idea. Um, Otherwise, I will. I just, go ahead. No, I think you're going to. Well, the mayor, I think, we attended today a, 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 a birthday celebration for a retired Air Force Colonel, Bill Harrington. I uh, turned 101 today, and uh, he uh, flew over 50 combat missions over Germany and uh, France and Austria during World War II, and uh, served in the Air Force, I think, until 1963, I think. Came off in 61. Yeah. And uh, anyway, he uh, has a lot of good stories to tell about his service in World War II. There was many times he didn't know he was going to make it back. Well, mission. So, I just want to mention that that uh, out of some respect for uh, Colonel Harrington, who turned 101 today. He lives at uh, Papillion Manor, and then uh, of course they're all in quarantine, but they arranged to have a ceremony, and uh, everybody was in the parking lot, and they had it piped into his room, and everybody was outside of his window. Um, Lieutenant Governor Foley came and spoke. Um, Colonel Dayton from the 55th at Offit came and spoke and gave him a presentation and gave him some gifts. Um, we had a strong representation from the police department, fire department, a lot of department heads, employees, staff. Um, it just it was a really good event. So um, I think a couple of news stations were there. So while you might watch that, and if you're on Facebook, 
uh, Pavilion Manor did Facebook a live and the whole ceremonies out there as well. It was a pretty cool ceremony. So thank you, Mr. Ingrid. Any other comments? Just a couple things from the last couple of weeks. Um, I think, uh, I think you're aware I got elected to the executive board of the League of Nebraska Municipalities and with the legislature in session that executive board has started to meet and so we, we take the votes on uh, statewide and what cities uh, stances are on different bills so if you've got any again if you've got any specific bills of interest um, let me know that because I can take it up to the state level with the league as we meet and I'll keep you updated on that um, we also kicked off the civil service process. As everybody knows, uh, Chief Lyons uh, submitted his resignation. Uh, he's basically taken, he's got a good opportunity to go back home. Um, and so he'll be leaving us at the end of March, I think. Um, no, March 1st is, is the end of February. Um, and so Lieutenant Witt, I, Deputy Chief of Witted will be the acting interim chief. And uh, so we did start the civil service process. And so applications actually opened up yesterday. Uh, we'll be taking applications all of February, and then we'll close applications. Civil Service will do a couple of rounds of their scrubbing the resumes, panel interviews, that type of thing. And then with the Civil Service process, we don't participate in that. The Civil Service Commission runs that. And then once they uh, rank all of the applicants, the top three names come to me and then I'll have a little bit of a process that we'll figure out um, to make the selection of the final and then um, that comes to you then for final approval and affirmation. So I think we're targeting on the current time frame May, end of May, to hopefully have a name coming up to you. So if you have questions or input on that, uh, let me know, otherwise spread the word that that is open. Um, we had a wastewater agency board meeting, nothing substantial on that really. Um, and then um, United Cities had a meeting, but again, it's uh, based on where the legislature's at. That's just actively monitoring bills. And this year, uh, the legislature is moving fast. Um, they're having hearings morning and night, and in some cases, are only given 24 hours notice. And so the legislature may be dealing with a bill, and we've only got 24 hours notice that they're dealing with that bill. So then, do we have a position on it? Do we want to go down and testify? So there's a lot of scrambling going on right now. So Again, as you monitor individually the legislature, if you have specific bills, make sure we're aware of that sooner than later. Um, and then we had the celebration with Mr. Harrington. Any other council comments? Motion to adjourn? Motion. Motion by Councilman Gaines? Second. Second by Councilman Jaworski. Please vote. Sunday? Yes. Mumford? Yes. Gaines? Yes. Glover? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 Yes